In the summer of 2010, the Anderson family embarked on a cross-country RV trip, a journey meant to strengthen their bond and create memories. Bill, the father, was a history teacher, and he had meticulously planned their route to include stops at historical landmarks. His wife, Karen, a passionate photographer, looked forward to capturing every moment. Their children, 16-year-old Alex and 10-year-old Jenny, were less enthusiastic but hoped to find some fun along the way. Their journey took them through the heart of Virginia, and Bill was particularly excited about visiting a now-closed attraction near Williamsburg, President's Park. The park, once a grand display of sculpted busts of all the U.S. presidents, had fallen into disrepair and was largely forgotten. Bill had read about it in an old travel guide and thought it would be a fascinating, albeit eerie, stop. As they approached the overgrown entrance of President's Park, a sense of unease settled over the family. The gates, once grand and welcoming, now hung loosely on rusted hinges. Weeds and ivy had taken over, and the air was thick with the smell of decay. Despite the foreboding atmosphere, Bill's curiosity pushed them forward. This place must have been something in its heyday, Bill mused as they parked the RV, let's take a quick look around. Karen hesitated but grabbed her camera, always eager to document their travels. Alex and Jenny followed reluctantly, sticking close to their parents. The path leading into the park was barely visible, obscured by tall grass and fallen branches. As they walked, the towering busts of the presidents emerged from the foliage, their stone faces cracked and weathered by time. Each bust bore a haunting expression, as if burdened by the weight of history and the decisions they represented. It was nearing dusk, and the shadows lengthened, casting eerie shapes across the park. Karen snapped photos, her camera clicking rhythmically. Alex and Jenny stayed close, feeling the oppressive silence around them. As they neared the bust of Abraham Lincoln, Jenny tugged on her mother's sleeve. Mom, did you hear that? Hear what, sweetie? Karen asked, lowering her camera. I thought I heard someone whispering, Jenny said, her voice trembling. Karen listened intently but heard nothing. It's probably just the wind, she reassured, though she felt a shiver run down her spine. Bill was engrossed in reading the plaque beneath Lincoln's bust, oblivious to his family's growing unease. Did you know this park was meant to educate people about presidential history? It's a shame it's been left to rot. As they continued, Alex noticed a cold spot near the bust of Andrew Jackson. Dad, come here. Feel this. Bill joined him and felt a sudden drop in temperature. That's strange, he muttered. It's like a cold draft. Night fell, and the park was bathed in the pale glow of the moon. The Andersons decided it was time to head back to the RV, but the way seemed to twist and turn, disorienting them. The path they had taken was no longer clear, and an unnatural fog began to roll in, further obscuring their view. Stay close, Bill instructed, trying to keep his voice steady. As they moved through the fog, ghostly figures began to appear around the presidential busts. At first, they were faint, almost transparent, but as the fog thickened, the apparitions grew more distinct. They were the spirits of those who had suffered and died as a result of the decisions and actions made by the presidents. Near the bust of George Washington, a group of soldiers appeared, their faces etched with pain and weariness. They reached out to the Andersons, their eyes pleading for recognition and justice. At the bust of Thomas Jefferson, enslaved individuals materialized, their chains clinking ominously. They stared at the family with a mix of sorrow and accusation, the weight of their suffering palpable. Karen snapped a photo of the eerie scene, but when she looked at the camera's screen, the figures were gone, leaving only the stone busts. This isn't right, Bill said, his voice shaking. We need to leave. Now. The family quickened their pace, but the park seemed to stretch endlessly, trapping them in a maze of haunted sculptures and restless spirits. They passed the bust of Andrew Jackson again, where Native American figures now stood, their faces a mask of pain and anger. Why can't we find the exit? Alex asked, panic rising in his voice. Bill tried to remain calm. Stay together. We'll find a way out. The spirits grew more aggressive, their whispers turning into anguished cries. 
Near the bust of Abraham Lincoln, they encountered the ghosts of Civil War soldiers, their bodies bearing the scars of battle. The spirits reached out, their hands passing through the living as if trying to pull them into their world. Jenny clung to her mother, tears streaming down her face. I want to go home. We will, Jenny, Karen promised, though she felt a deep sense of dread. She snapped another photo, hoping to capture evidence of the haunting, but her camera malfunctioned, the screen flickering ominously. As they stumbled through the fog, they reached the bust of Richard Nixon. The air around it was thick with a sense of betrayal and paranoia. The spirit of Nixon himself appeared, his eyes filled with a haunted guilt. He seemed to speak, though no sound came out, his face contorted in torment. Bill felt a strange compulsion to approach the spirit. What do you want? he demanded. Why are you haunting us? The spirit raised a hand, pointing towards the center of the park. Bill understood they needed to confront the source of the haunting to escape. Gathering his family, Bill led them towards the heart of President's Park. There, they found a massive, cracked pedestal that once held the bust of the most recent president at the time of the park's closure. The pedestal was now empty, symbolizing the unresolved pain and suffering caused by the collective actions of the leaders. The spirits surrounded them, their cries reaching a fever pitch. Bill realized that the spirits needed acknowledgement, a recognition of their pain and the historical wrongs that had been inflicted upon them. He knelt before the empty pedestal, his voice trembling. We acknowledge your suffering. We recognize the pain caused by the decisions of those in power. Please, let us go. The spirits paused, their forms wavering. The fog began to lift, and the oppressive atmosphere started to lighten. One by one, the spirits faded away, their cries turning into whispers and then silence. The Andersons found themselves back on the path leading to their RV, the exit now clearly visible. They hurried back, not daring to look back at the park. As they drove away, the oppressive feeling lifted, replaced by a profound sense of relief. The Andersons continued their road trip, but the experience at President's Park haunted them. Bill stopped talking about history with the same enthusiasm, and Karen's photographs from the park remained undeveloped, a silent testament to the horror they had endured. Back in Oak Ridge, the story of their encounter became a cautionary tale, a reminder of the lingering ghosts of history. President's Park was officially closed off, the gates chained and padlocked, warning signs posted to deter any curious visitors. But the memory of the spirits remained, a chilling reminder of the consequences of power and the unresolved suffering of those who had been its victims. And in the quiet moments, when the wind whispered through the trees, the Andersons sometimes felt as if they were still being watched by unseen eyes, the echoes of the past never fully silenced.